Alex Gene Vosler here, Houston, Texas, September 15th, 2010. Um, it's a quick little, uh, <clears throat> I might repeat myself from a bunch of other previous postings, but uh, question on a, on a beautiful 60-year-old <clears throat> home built in 1950, huge corner lot, want to have healthy trees and also a low watering bill uh, three years ago an irrigation system was installed uh, the idea being to make the grass grow better so the great it's working great on the grass the lawn looks wonderful right there are places here where the lawn doesn't look so great particularly underneath this live oak tree um, and what I generally recommend with live oaks uh, if you have grass that doesn't want to grow then why for try to force the issue why beat your head against the wall trying to for gra force grass to grow or the tree which is more important which is more important to your property value the tree or the lawn doesn't want it and so of course ideally this entire sector of the yard would be a big giant mulch bed with zero turf grass at all. The uh, compromise being make the ring as big as you can stand it. I would make it a minimum of, of 10 radial feet. And I might make it bell shaped and tie it into the curb where it doesn't want to grow there either. Build up the curb and plant some low perennials or ground cover, but leave this a mulch bed. Of course, after root invigoration, that's also a bed prep procedure, so you can plant some shade tolerant perennials. But uh, this is part of, you know, my incomplete book, Tree Center Design. Before you install an irrigation system, you draw a circle around a tree like this. Beautiful tree. Very thin crown. I'd give it a 60 or a 70 on its report card just because its leaf population is very poor. Lots of tip dieback and lots of <clears throat> outer bark rotting fungus. This isn't hypoxalon, although it might look like hypoxalon in this not very high quality video. And from a distance, it looks like hypoxalon canker. Um, let me try a different angle because of the sun. If you look at this bark, that's not hypoxalon. That is moisture. Um, you know, Houston is a high humidity, high moisture place. This is a leaning tree, and uh, you might blame some of this on sunburn, but this is this, that's also possible. But we've got some sort of things you don't treat chemically. You promote good soil nutrition, good organic matter, and so tree ring way bigger. We've also got some very large trees here, all of them with tip dieback all of them exhibiting classic symptoms of phytophthora root rot, all of them over pruned, uh, heavily over pruned. Let's go take a look at these live oaks on the left side of the house and see just how thin they are. These are live oaks. We should have a hard time seeing blue sky. And so, and they, you know, this is another example of having a lawn guy do a spreader, a lawn fertilizer, and thinking you're you're getting the trees too. So, very thin crowns on these live oaks. They were lion's tailed in the past, stripped out. They now have sucker growth, uh, sprouting, some sprouting in the interior. But uh, they really could stand to have darn near twice as much leaf population. This willow oak in the back had a huge piece break out of it. Let's take a look at that. This willow oak. I'm walking past the sooty mold on the, on the, 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 the again, high organic content, uh, topsoil compost, mulch frequently, and, uh, and shut off the irrigation.